ಗೆಳೆಯರೆ ನಾವಿವತ್ತು ಹೋಗ್ತಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಪ್ರಾಣಿ ದಿ ಪೆಟ್ ಸ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಚುವರಿ ಅಂತ ಕನಕಪುರ ರಸ್ತೆಯಲ್ಲಿರುವಂತಹ ಒಂದು ಅಭಯಾರಣ್ಯ ಅಥವಾ ಝೂ ಅಂತಲೇ ಅನ್ಬೋದು ಇದು ಬಂದುಬಿಟ್ಟು ನಮಗೆ ಮೆಜೆಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಕಿಂದ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಮೂವತ್ತು ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ ದೂರದಲ್ಲಿದೆ ನೀವು ಬಸ್ ಮುಖಾಂತರ ಕನಕಪುರ ರಸ್ತೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಕಗ್ಗಲಿಪುರ ಆದ ನಂತರ ಸೋಮನಹಳ್ಳಿ ಗೇಟಲ್ಲಿ ಇಳ್ಕೊಂಡು ನಂತರ ಅಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಯಾವುದಾದ್ರು ಪ್ರೈವೇಟ್ ವೆಹಿಕಲ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಬರಬಹುದು ಹಾಯ್ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಗಳೇರೆ ಇವತ್ತು ನಾನು ಬಂದಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಕನಕಪುರ ರಸ್ತೆಯಲ್ಲಿರುವಂತಹ ಪ್ರಾಣಿ ಅಭಯಾರಣ್ಯ ಅಂತ ಪ್ರಾಣಿ ದಿ ಪೆಟ್ ಸ್ಯಾಂಚುವರಿ ಅಂತ ಪ್ರಾಣಿ ಅಭಯಾರಣ್ಯ ಸೊ ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಬರೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಆನ್ಲೈನಲ್ಲೂ ಬುಕ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೋದು ಮತ್ತು ವೀಕ್ ಡೇಸಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದಾಗ ನಿಮಗೆ ಜನ ಕಡಿಮೆ ಇರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ನೇರವಾಗಿ ಕೂಡ ನೀವು ಹೋಗ್ಬೋದು ಸ್ಥಳಕ್ಕೆ ಬಂದರೆ ನೀವು ಹಲವಾರು ಪ್ರಾಣಿ ಪಕ್ಷಿಗಳನ್ನು ನೋಡ್ಬೋದು ಸೊ ಬನ್ನಿ ನನಗೆ ಇವಾಗ ಒಬ್ಬರು ಗೈಡ್ ಅಲರ್ಟ್ ಆಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಆದಿತ್ಯ ಅಂತ ಅವ್ರ ಮುಖಾಂತರ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಏನೇನಿದೆ ಅನ್ನೋದನ್ನು ನೋಡೋಣ ಸೊ ಈಗ ನಾವು ಮೇನ್ ಗೇಟಿಂದ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಹೋಗ್ತಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಗೆಳೆಯರೆ ಸೊ ಗೇಟಿಂದ ಒಳಗಡೆನೇ ಹೋಗ್ತಿದ್ದಂಗೆ ನಮಗೆ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸೈಡಲ್ಲಿ ಇಲ್ಲೊಂದು ಟಿಕೆಟ್ ಕೌಂಟರ್ ಕಾಣಿಸುತ್ತೆ ನೀವು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಟಿಕೆಟ್ನ ನೇರವಾಗಿ ಬಂದು ಕೂಡ ತೊಗೊಬೋದು ಸ್ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಪೇಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ ಕೂಡ ಇದೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಹಾಗೆಯೇ ನೀವು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಬರೋದಕ್ಕೂ ಮುಂಚೆ ವೀಕೆಂಡಲ್ಲಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ತುಂಬ ಕ್ರೌಡ್ ಇರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ನೀವು ಆನ್ಲೈನಲ್ಲಿ ಟಿಕೆಟ್ ಬುಕ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ಅವರ ವೆಬ್ಸೈಟ್ ಮುಖಾಂತರ ಪ್ರಾಣಿ ಡಾಟ್ ಕೋ ಡಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ಅಂತ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವು ಬುಕ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೋದು and this one is a female right? so green iguanas when they are juveniles they are going to be a bright green in color and as they grow older the males are going to develop an orange color to them whereas these guys are going to get much darker so they actually become a little bit gray in color whereas males are going to be very bright orange. so these guys are arboreal lizards meaning they will be spending their entire life on trees and when they are on top of trees they are going to have a predator right they are going to have birds as their primary predator and they have certain counter measures to get uh, to get rid of So you can see these spikes on the earth. So these spikes are called as pseudo spikes, meaning they are not attached to anything. They are just attached to the skin. And because of this, uh, see they are very flimsy, they are very weak spikes. But a bird that is going to, look, uh, that's going to be looking at us on the top, it's going to think that these are very sharp spikes and it's not going to attack them. And uh, you can see this spot right in between their eyes, right? This spot. This spot this is, spot. yeah. That spot is called as a pineal eye or a pineal gland. right this sort of acts like a third eye for them. so it cannot actually record pictures cannot actually see pictures but they can actually register shadows and the light so if there's a bird big enough bird flying on top of it they're going to they're going to sense that bird and they'll jump into the water i don't think you can see this but you can see there's a flap of skin right underneath her chest mm. this is called as a dula right male uh, male iguanas will have a much bigger dula and you might have seen the garden lizards in your home they will be bobbing their head up and down yeah. right? so that is how they show dominance a uh, male iguana will actually show the other male iguana its dula the bigger and brighter the dula is the more dominant the male so they do uh, something called as a head bob what is the life span of it around 20 to 25 years 25 years so we, the, we have a male iguana called ivan Ivan is the oldest, he's around 10 years old, 10 to 11 years old. You don't have to be scared, man. So okay. the calmer you are, the calmer the animal will also be. So, is this a tortoise or a turtle? <laughs> okay, so what is the difference then between a tortoise and a turtle? Okay, so the main difference between a tortoise and a turtle is going to be that tortoise is a land animal, meaning they are completely terrestrial okay. and they are going to spend their entire life on land, right? A tortoise is going to have a dome shaped skin. you going to have elephant like legs and uh, if you drop take a tortoise and drop him in the lake you are not doing him any favors he's going to drown and die right whereas turtles or the ones that you see in the sea the ones with flippers they are completely aquatic meaning they're going to spend their entire life in water and they're going to come to the shore once a year just to lay their eggs then what is this guy turtle but he has claws he does not have flippers and he just saw him outside all the water so this guy is neither a tortoise nor a turtle is something called as a terrapin oh. so terrapins are fresh water completely fresh water and they spend their time both in water as well as outside of it okay. so this particular species of terrapin is called as a red eared slider terrapin so can you see those red color markings on the side of their face yeah. right because of this these guys are called as red eared slider terrapins and though they are called as red eared slider terrapins can you spot any ears on them no 
No, right? Yeah, these guys do not have an external ear. And just like snakes, these are deaf to sound. They can just hear vibration. So, radial slider terrapins are native to North America. And though they're from North America, they're one of the most common pets all over the world. Right? Even in India, you can get these guys in almost all aquarium shops. They are sold as the coin size turtles around. They will be around this big. And uh, what happens is a lot of people get them thinking they're going to stay the same. Right? But the thing is, these guys are capable of growing up to 12 to 14 inches oh. and can live up to 30 to 40 years. Not a lot of people are, uh, are going to be ready for this sort of condition. So what they do is, they just get them when they are small and once they outgrow their tank, they just drop them off in the nearest water body that they find. So this is a very bad thing to do because these guys become invasive. Invasive animal is something that is going to compete with the local wildlife for its food and resources. Right? Mm -hmm. So these guys become invasive and they are omnivores, meaning they are going to eat anything that they can find. Any plants, any small animal, mm -hmm. insects, small mammals, anything that they can fit in their beak, they will eat it up. So this is going to be disastrous for the ecosystem because they are not going to give anything in return. They are just going to take everything from the ecosystem. Right? Okay, so how hard do you think his shell is going to be? Pretty hard. Okay, so he does not have a hard shell. A lot of people believe that his shell is rock hard, right? But that is not the case. He has a semi-hard shell, meaning uh, his shell is made up of two layers. One, it is going to be a bone layer at the bottom and on the top it is going to be made up of keratin. The same substance that makes our name, right? So, his thickness, the thickness of the shell, the hardness of the shell is going to be something comparable to a coconut shell. Right? It's going to be hard, it's going to give him some protection, but if you drop him from a height, it's going to crack his shell. Okay? And the shell is filled with nerve endings as well. So, there's going to be a lot of nerve endings on his shell and he's going to feel everything that's going to happen to him. Because see, now he's pretty calm because I'm, I'm like gently touching his shell. As soon as I take my hands off, he's going to react differently. So, tapping or knocking on his shell is going to be pretty painful for him as well. So you can gently have a gentle touch on his shell if you want and if you want to hold him just place your hand flat. I cannot completely let you hold him, I will be holding on to him but you can actually see how he is. He won't go inside. So that is not their main mode of defense. Okay. So they are called as sliders for that matter. So like, uh, the main form of defense is going to be just sliding into the water whenever they see danger. So they do go into their shell but not as much as the regular tortoises. Right? Just place your hand flat, one hand, right? Mm -hmm. So they are just going to have beaks. You can see they are going to have beaks. All tortoises, turtles and terrapins, they do not have teeth. They have beaks. So these guys, as I told you, are omnivores and they eat, actually eat fish as well. So mm. it's not about how strong the bite is going to be. It's, whenever they bite, they are never going to let go. Right? Once they bite, they are going to hold on because fish are going to be really slippery and they have to make sure that the fish do not get away. Four guys are geese, whereas those guys in the corner they are ducks. Right? So the identifying features are going to be their size, uh, length of their neck, and you can look at the bottom of the base of the beaks over there. So they are going to have a ball like structure above. This is called as a basin knob. Only geese are going to have that. Okay. So geese are uh, typically much larger and they have much longer necks than ducks. Right? So you can see those ducks, they are going to have a much more plainer beak. The beaks are going to be really plain. Right? So, yeah. Do you think these guys can fly? Do you think ducks and geese can fly? Mm -hmm. Probably for short, short distances. So ducks and geese in captivity, they only fly for very short distance. But whereas in the wild, in the natural, they are said to be migratory birds, meaning they actually migrate from one country to another in search of food, mate or shelter. So there's a species of goose called as a bar-headed goose which actually flies from China to India, all the way over the Mount Everest as well. So... I don't know, but... She owns it one time. So, yeah. Uh, so, what happens is, the birds only fly if they have to fly. Meaning, they fly in search of food, food. or shelter or meat. If you provide everything for a bird in one single place, there is no necessity for them to fly. And because of this, they do not fly. And generation after generation of doing this, is going to make them forget how to fly. So these guys have been in captivity for generations and because of that these guys have actually forgotten how to fly. right? And since they are, do not fly, they eat a little bit more than their wild counterparts and they are going to gain a little bit more weight. So a wild duck or a wild goose is going to be 30 to 40% less, uh, like it's going to weigh less than these guys.
and uh, so these guys are basically nothing but uh, lazier versions of their wild selves. So they have actually forgotten how to fly, and since we provide everything for them, they actually have no need to learn us. So and you can see all the birds are very clean. So even the duck inside the water. Uh, he's, he's, he's clean, right? He's not. There's no water sticking onto him, right? The water is just rolling off his feathers. Mm. This is because they have something called as an oilary gland at the base of their tail. So before going into the water, what they would do is they'll use their beak as an applicator and will spread this oil all over their feathers. Hairs are going to be much larger than rabbits. They're going to have much larger ears, and they're going to have a longer legs as well. So the way they move is going to be different, meaning a hare is going to run, whereas a rabbit is going to hop. Right? You can see these guys have much smaller legs but with much more powerful legs whereas hares they run, they run like dogs. Right? This is a European rabbit, we have no wild rabbits in India. So all the animals that you see running outside in the wild are hares, Indian hares. Uh, so if this guy was an Indian hare, I would probably be in jail right now because it's illegal to own any wild animals, native Indian wild animals as pets. Right? So this guy over here is from Europe. All rabbits that you find, all the pet rabbits that you find in India are European rabbits. Okay, so what do you think a rabbit is going to eat? Grass. Grass. Right. Well, the first time I've actually gotten the right answer the first time, first attempt, because a lot of people assume that rabbits are going to eat carrots. Right? So, yeah, what happens is carrots, rabbits love eating carrots, but carrots have, have too much sugar in them. Right? They're like chocolates for these guys, and mm. they should be just fed them as treats. Right? One, like once or twice every 10 days or 15 days. If you feed them just carrots, they're going to have a lot of dietary issues. Like they're going to even, they can, they can even become diabetic. And uh, an average lifespan of a rabbit is somewhere around 68 years. Whereas 6 to 8 years. No, not 60 years. Okay. 60 years. <laughs> 6 to 8 years. But if you're just feeding them carrots, their lifespan is going to get reduced to 1 or 2 years. Right? It's that bad. Okay, so how would you pick up a rabbit? Yeah. <laughs> so you might have actually seen people picking up them up by, up by their ears, right? Picking up by their ears, magicians and all, yeah. whatever. So that has become the norm right now, but that is a really bad thing to do. You're never supposed to hold a rabbit by its ears because whenever you pick them up by their ears, their entire body weight is going to be on their neck. Mm -hmm. So these guys are bottom heavy animals, meaning their entire body weight is going to be at the back of their body. So if you pick them up by their ears, their, uh, their backbone is going to, or the neck is going to support their entire body weight. And if the animal tries to move or wiggle, it's going to break his back. Right? So the ideal way of picking up a rabbit is by supporting all four legs like this. Or you can cradle them up like the baby legs. Right? So, this one will work. So her name is Gray. Gray is our friendliest rabbit that we have. So I brought this one out for So I'll be placing Gray on your laps. You can have a gentle touch. Right? So please do not try picking them up because if they get scared or uh, if they do not feel comfortable, they might scratch. But so it's just not done. It's 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 not where are you? Can you leave back? Where is the road and hurry? If you care, I'm going to get a better guy. Get a little bit of a little bit Papa, I like calm So when they are actually scared, they'll curl up into a ball. So he's not scared, but when they are scared, they'll actually curl up into a ball and they'll put their heads and their uh, legs into their ball. Bye. 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 Bye.